Hi! In this video, we will learn how to create our own software presets for Touche using various third-party VST instruments. This is done inside Touche's companion app Lie. Since Touche and Touche SE share the same functionality when it comes to hosting VST instruments, this video applies to both models. But before you can create your own software presets, you need to have already scanned your VST instruments with Lie. If everything went smoothly, all of your VST instruments will appear in the drop-down list in Lie Slot Center. But if you haven't yet performed the scan, please go watch our first steps video that explains the procedure and meet me back here. Ready? Let's create a sound together. First, launch Lie. Click Menu, then New Plugin Preset. In the Slot Center, which you will find in the center of the app, the drop-down list lets us choose one of our plugins. Select the plugin you wish to play, it will now be hosted inside Lie. If you want to view the interface of your virtual instrument, click on the eye icon located in the toolbar in the slot center. From this window, you have complete control over the virtual instrument, just as if you were to have loaded it directly in your DAW. Let's try using a factory preset from the synth to see how it sounds. Once you've found a sound you like, you can choose the way Touche controls it. Let's go back to the main interface. We can see here that the slot center contains 8 slots. You can choose one parameter for each slot from the drop-down list. For instance, slot number 1 might control the cutoff and slot number 2 might steer the mod wheel. But there is also a more intuitive way to select the parameters that you want to control. Let's remove the parameters we just added and open the interface of the virtual instrument. At the top of the instrument view, there are eight numbers to represent each slot. To assign a parameter to a slot, click on a number and then click the respective knob. If I wanted to map cutoff to slot 1 and the model wheel to slot 2, I could click slot 1 and then the cutoff knob, then click slot 2 and then the mod wheel. You can confirm that your parameters have been mapped correctly by heading back to the slot center. But still, there's an even quicker way to do this. Once again, let's remove the parameters we just added. If you go back to the virtual instrument interface, you'll see a button called Speed Mapping. Clicking the Speed Mapping button allows you to pick out all the parameters that you want to control. The A will then automatically assign each two slot, working its way from 1 to 8. For example, if I wanted to map the cutoff to slot 1 and the mod wheel to slot 2, I could simply click Speed Mapping, then move the cutoff, then move the mod wheel. While I'm at it, let's add the modulation amount for the filter and port amount time as well. And that's all. I've chosen four parameters in just five clicks. For the purposes of this video, I'm only going to demo four control parameters, but you have the option of mapping up to eight parameters, including macros. We just chose four parameters to control with Touche, but if I were to press on Touche now, the sound wouldn't change. And this is because I only chose the parameters that I want to control, what I still have to do is set up how Touche will control them. The next step is to assign each parameter to one of Touche's four axes. We can see that each of the eight slots features grayed out symbols representing the axes. To assign a parameter, simply click on the axis that you want for that parameter. In this case, I want to control the cutoff with the top axis and the mod wheel with the right axis. Touche now controls the cutoff and the mod wheel and we can start playing. That was easy. By the way, a popular way to play Touche is by using the lateral axis to play pitch bend or vibrato. Activating this is pretty simple as well. Just click on the dedicated pitch bend button above the scope and you're good to go. Please note that the pitch bend range will always need to be set up inside the sound generator itself. You won't be able to do this from within Touche or Lie. Let's deactivate pitch bend for a moment and go back to our basic preset with only the cutoff and mod wheel being mapped to two axes. Let's say that I don't like the fact that I don't get any sound at all unless I push on the top axis. 
The reason for this is that the parameter value sent by Touche will always override the current value inside the plugin. Because the cutoff is assigned to the top axis, if I don't press on the top, the cutoff will remain at its minimum value. After all, it is the cutoff frequency of a low pass filter. If it's at zero, it will filter out every frequency, leaving us without sound. To raise the cutoff to be somewhere above zero, even when we're not pressing on Touche, we'll need to adjust the minimum value. Once you've assigned an axis to a slot, two sliders will appear. One for minimum value and one for maximum. You can increase the minimum value for the cutoff via the slider. To find the right value, please first play a note without using Touche, then move the slider up until you hear something that you like. Now when you play with Touche, its influence on the cutoff will begin at the minimum value that you just set. For orientation, you can monitor the original parameter setting of your plugin by checking the little triangle next to the min-max bar. It shows the plugin's original parameter value. Moving to sheet to the right, I notice that the mod wheel parameter is too extreme for my taste. If the sound that I want to achieve is a nice and more subtle vibrato, I'll need to reduce the effect of the mod wheel when using the right axis. This means I'll have to lower the slot's maximum value. And this time, hold the note and push the touch plate all the way to the right. This will send the maximum value, allowing you to adjust the slider until you hear something that you like. You could also push the encoder into shade to temporarily freeze the unit at the current state. Now when I play to shade, its action on the mod wheel is limited to the maximum value I just set. Now let's talk a bit about sensitivity curves. A super useful feature of Lie is the ability to adjust the sensitivity curve of each slot. Clicking on the curve symbol next to a slot will display its curve. And if you click on the curve itself, the scope on the right will disappear and the curve editor opens. How the curve works is pretty simple. The white dot moves from the left to the right when you press on the axis assigned to the slot, which in this case is the top axis. The vertical axis represents the value of the parameter, which in this case is the cutoff of a low pass filter. If the curve is linear, the more you press, the more the filter's cutoff will open. But you can also invert this curve. That way, when you press, the filter will close instead. You could also bend the curve from linear to logarithmic or exponential, or directly select a curve preset from the list. It's even possible to hand draw the curve. Now let's add the two parameters that weren't linked to an axis yet. With the bottom axis, I want to control the intensity with which the LFO modulates the filter. And I want to increase the portamento time when shifting the touch plate to the left, so I can hear the pitch drifting. I'll adjust the minimum and maximum values a bit and we're good to go. Let's recap. We chose to assign four parameters to the slots in Lie, decided to which axes on Touche these should be linked, we adjusted the minimum and maximum values of each slot, perhaps customized the sensitivity curve until we were happy with the sound and moreover happy with how it reacts to the motions we play on Touche. Let's say that our sound is finished. So let's save it so that we can recall and play it at a later point.
To save your preset, go to Menu, select Save as Preset. It will ask you for a name. I'm going to write Tutorial. Et voilà! The sound now appears in the preset list and the next time I want to play with it, all I have to do is double click on its name. Lié will then recall the entire configuration, including the VST, the preset we used for that virtual instrument, the parameters we chose, the axis we assigned, the min and max values and so on. To find your preset more easily, you could also tag it after saving it. Just load the preset, then click All next to the tag filter. Then click Edit Presets Tag. Enter the tags you want and click Save. The sound we built was just one possibility of thousands. I recommend stepping a bit through our factory sounds and presets for third-party instruments. You will find plenty of inspiration for mapping parameters. It was only for the sake of transparency that I assigned four parameters, each to a separate axis. You're totally free to assign every of the eight slots to any of the four axes. Perhaps increasing the filter's resonance a bit while opening the filter, raising the volume of an oscillator at the same time, or perhaps adding more delay or chorus when shifting the touch plate to the side. If you can dream it, you can do it. We've just walked through a standard workflow for how to create and save a custom software preset from scratch. Should you encounter problems while trying to map certain parameters for some of the more popular VST instruments out there, stay tuned. We'll troubleshoot in the next video. Thanks for watching.